as I said, we're, we're, we're now working on a new file system for VMS and really the, um, the driver for that is scale. As, as I said before, right, we were looking back back when, when this whole file architecture was designed and in that respect, ODS-5 is not really very different from the very first file structure. All of these things use 32-bit pointers. Um, and, 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 you know, for example, a sequential directory format. Um, and that works up to a point, but, you know, like 32-bit pointers, um, the largest volume you can address is 2 terabytes. After that, you're just out of bits. And, well, guess what? You know, volumes went past 2 terabytes several years ago. Um, and the, um, the directory scale problem is also something that we've been aware of for a long time. The old sequential directory format works fine when file names are created by people. Okay, because um, if a person is naming the files in a directory, uh, you get beyond about a thousand files or so and they can't possibly manage that directory anymore, right? So nobody does that. Um, but you can also have software creating file names. And of course, software doesn't care about that. It's going to remember the file name somehow. And if there's a thousand files or if there's a million files in a directory, the software will work fine. But with a million files, a sequential directory structure doesn't work anymore. Um, one of the classic examples was with um, the VMS mail utility. Um, which um, used an RMS indexed file uh, you know, as the root of the mail structure, and that's what it used to organize the folders and everything. And small mail messages would just get dropped directly into that file. If it was a larger mail message, it got written to an external file, and then we just put a pointer um, in the indexed file. Um, and that file name for the external file was generated algorithmically. It was in fact, right, its name was like mail dollar a bunch of digits, which were the arrival time of the mail. <clears throat> um, and after a while that started to cause all kinds of problems and the, 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 the classic example was when um, Jeff Pilsmacher, who was the manager of EMS engineering at the time, decided he wanted to reorganize his mail file. One of, one, one of the problems is with the mail directories is that they tend to get very sparse and fragmented, and it was recommended that every once in a while you just take the files and, and move them all to a new mail directory. And so he decided, well, okay, the weekend's a good time to do that. And so when he left Friday night, he entered the command to move his mail files to a new directory, and when he came in Monday morning, it was still running. <clears throat> so, right, that's, that's a scaling problem. And, of course, the reason for it um, is that the runtime of some of these algorithms um, goes with the square of the size. That's called square law performance. And, right, square law, square law performance eventually always becomes a problem. So we had a couple of motiva motivators like that. First of all, just plain the 32-bit block address, um, handling large directories, and then we were also looking at, well, how do we manage space on a disk because, the, you know, you have a storage bitmap and it increases linearly with the size of the volume. Um, not to mention that we had, um, oh, a good 20 to 30 years of use and development in the VMS file system um, and a lot of people working on it and after a while the code just becomes difficult to work with um, and so we realized yeah we need we need a new start and we we had started that um, back when um, you know when uh, when digital uh, you know then eight, uh, compact then HP owned VMS but that project was never finished and so now we've, we've pulled this thing out of mothballs and I've been working on finishing it. Um, and so, you know, what's different about it, inside, right, well, the pointers are, surprise, 64 bits. Um, 
directories as well as a lot of other things are implemented as binary trees, um, which means that a lot of the, um, the, the processes of managing directories scales with the log of the size of the directory, which is just much more tractable um, than linear directories. Um, and so, um, other than that, you know, basically, if we can, um, you know, if we can drop the new file system in, um, and have people not notice that there's a new file system, we will have succeeded. Um, other than, of course, that you know, we can then support much bigger disks and directories will, will, will perform better and so on. Um, the other important thing that comes along with the new file system is that, like a lot of our competitors, it will be a journaling file system, which means that um, when there are metadata changes, like when you create a file, delete a file, or whatever, um, those changes are first written to a write-ahead log, um, and then eventually they get written to their home locations on the disk. And what that does is, um, you know, just like comparable systems in database management, it makes the file system crash-proof. Um, the existing ODS-125 file system um, was designed with what's called a careful write strategy, uh, which meant that if you crash in the middle of a file uh, operation, you will fail in a safe way, which means right, we might lose some free space, um, but we will never do something really nasty like allocate the same block to two different files. Or, for, or, or allocate a block to a file and have it still marked free in the storage map. Um, and, but on the other hand, we will lose space if you crash, which means that you have to do a rebuild of the disk when it gets mounted, which is very much like the Unix um, FSCK. Um, and again, that was okay when disk size is measured in megabytes. But you get a multi-terabyte disk that has millions and millions of files on it. That rebuild time scales with the size of the file structure, and it becomes impractical. Um, and so with a logging file system, you don't need a whole scale scan like that. All you do is you replay the last part of the log, and all of the missing pieces and operations that were, were in progress get put back and everything is consistent. Um, so, the, uh, you know, so the file system becomes much more tolerant to crashes. Um, and you know, mainly, I, you know, because I'm, I mean, VMS doesn't crash a whole lot, but you can still have things like power failures or whatever um, that we have no control over. And so this makes recovery much more effective and much faster. So, other than that, it's going to be pretty much the same. It's going to be the same RMS on top of it. Um, people have occasionally asked, well, what are we going to do about RMS? Um, and, yeah, eventually we may need to do something there. But so far, um, you don't have the same kind of motivation because the, the limitations in RMS go with the size of a file, right? The, what, what's driving the need for a new file system is the size of a volume, right? Volumes are obviously getting bigger. Files, yeah, people are using larger files, but mostly people are just using larger numbers of files. Um, so they're, um, you know, it's, it, it's less of an issue being limited to a file size that, you know, that, that's expressed in 32 bits worth of blocks.